tracks. Why you always gotta pick riff tracks? It's your lucky day. It's time for riff tracks. Hello, I'm Faith, and welcome to Faith's Take, where I talk about anything and everything that I find interesting. And welcome to episode 45 of Every Rift Track Short Reviewed, where I take five Rift Track Shorts in chronological order, review them, and give them a rating between one and five, with the points being good, great, awesome, fantastic, and spectacular, because I don't think a bad Rift Track Short exists. So, uh, hey guys, it's been a while. Between work, starting physical therapy for some hip strain six months post-op, and just general 2020 depression, I haven't gotten around to much video-wise, but I seek to change all that. And I figure an episode of this series is a great place to start. So let's not waste any more time and just dive right into episode 45 of Every Rift Trek Short Reviewed. Number 221, Color It Clean, from June 13th, 2014. Uh, a feeling of pride to do a good job. A good job like this cameraman who just left the camera on running on the floor. I grew up watching dirty jobs with my dad, and I learned at a young age that there are many gross, unpleasant, yet necessary jobs that help keep a clean and functioning society run smoothly. A lot of those jobs many people can't appreciate until they've seen it or even done it themselves. Stereotypical Karens, for instance, have probably never worked in customer service, hence their lack of empathy for those that do. And, and this short showcases that idea as it's all about janitors and some unappreciated work they do. Not janitorial work in general, though, but this nearly 20 minute long feature is about the janitors at a university cleaning the bathrooms, and solely the bathrooms. And man, you better respect all the time that goes into cleaning a public bathroom after this. The short doesn't even go into anything particularly grody about the job, it just seems so soul-suckingly boring. Ah, urinals and comic sands, together at last. Just made for each other. Guys, uh, life is a highway. <laughs> I want to ride it all night long. Uh, no one really notices whether it's clean or not, because tomorrow uh, it's going to get dirty again. Taco Tuesday, a janitor's but, uh, battle of the Pelennor Fields. The, point that the student seems as though that some people uh, think that janitoring is just something that you can go out on the street and pick up a man and you can do it. Well, what was that about yes, picking up a man? Everybody can't janitor. When you say janitor, you think of a man who just comes in and sweeps the floor and empties the waste baskets. But there's a lot more to uh, this janitor work than that. Uh, the grumbling, uh, the, lurking, the manifesto man. revising. It's a uh, uh, prime requisite. And then you have to uh, be able to see what has to be done. You have to hunt those who wronged you. You have to make them pay. The word gent, I've always felt that uh, this type of person couldn't do the work the university expects. So you can see how only a select few could do this kind of work, guys. A clean toilet or restroom. Yes, uh, well, it's the only thing that brings me joy in this veil of sin really and tears. Uh, the main job. You don't run into any circumstances like that. Oh, seems weird to bolt hand grenades to your bathroom walls, but That's right. okay. You're on the move, continually. One town to out. another, but uh, you don't running from your past, get out caught between the and cops and right the mob. Out. I find it myself a, a, a moving a lot slower than I should. And I, I fight that all the time. Sorry to burden you with my personal demons. Mm. <laughs> it takes a certain type of person to, to do that. Now, uh, a lot of, of uh, men wouldn't fit in as janitor. I say unto you, the graveyards are full of and such I men. Think that is one reason. Another reason. Each man is an individual, and he's going to do the work his way. We take and back the, what we said before the about the job the, being particular. The, job, the work accomplished. I will say that while the short should certainly get people thinking about how important janitors are, it does portray a bit of a conflicting message. The janitors narrating the piece for us insist that their work is not only important but fulfilling, and not just anyone can do it and give it their all, but they say it all so flatly and lifelessly. I mean, if these guys were custodians in real life, they wouldn't be the best actors in the world, but their tones of voice make them sound like they could slit their wrists tonight and it wouldn't surprise you. It makes it all seem like the polar opposite of the beautiful canvas of opportunity they're trying to make it out to be. How much time should you spend cleaning one bathroom? Well, Mike, uh, no less than 10 to 12 hours. 10 to 12 Not counting the hair traps, of course. And uh, the men are wonderful to get along with. And uh, I like to see these boys enthusiastic about their work. And uh, I was named and, uh, Most Humble Janitor in 1962, yeah, I, I and uh, really I'm uh, modest about that. And they, uh, 
and uh, wow. uh, it's surprising uh, how much better they do than I did when I started. At first, I used I to bring extra dirt from home and spread it around. Any, any of that. You take a man who came and comes in off the farm, for instance. Well, he's used to an well, army of chickens uh, who do his personal bidding. He, he, I like to have him just... Uh, yeah, dispose of some I bodies, swear their undying loyalty to the uber we, janitor, even first day stuff. But there is about uh, a thousand things to remember. Little things that most people don't uh, realize. Like how I took this voice and, and became uh, teeny little super guy so on Sesame you take Street. It day by day, and... Uh, and uh, whether you know they notice it or not, a lot of times they might not say anything, but you know they know the job is up. As he enters minute 52 of cleaning this toilet, it begins to near his standards. All the new men swing. But what? And uh, that means that when a man's off sick, they take his place. And his wife. And you would wonder, uh, well, where am I at? Am I halfway through? Am I a third of the way through? I was just asking myself All that about this film. You refer to your assignment sheet, and you know where you're at. Now, we can't... Uh, mirror, mirror in the stall. Follow, Who's uh, the most thorough janitor man, of them all? Or, uh, if a man goes into an area, and the way he has been taught is not practical... We dispense what's known as restroom justice. Now to quickly kill a few tunes in this dip barrel, and then it's punch-out time for me. This concludes. If, I'm doing, just kidding. Uh, we have 40 or 50 more urinals to look at. Oh, <laughs> something that uh, cleaning restrooms is something that you can look back and see what you've done. And what you'll have to do, do all problem. over again tomorrow. Your porcelain. While janitoring may be a crucial job in this world, this makes it seem more depressing than the cliches have even taught us to believe. But this long winded lesson gets a four and a half out of five. And uh, it's up to you to do the best you can. You're on your own. Stay tuned for the next in our series, Color It Bleak. Number 222, Batman Robin's Ruse from June 24th, 2014. Okay, there were street corners in the original Sim City that looked less fake than this. If you'll remember last time, Vicki Vale's brother Jimmy had just discovered a passed out Batman to be none other than Bruce Wayne. Soon after, Batman took a tumble out of skyscraper window to his supposed death. But it turns out Bruce is alive, though, as Jimmy stole the bat suit, presumably to try to make up for his misdeeds and distract the wizard's other goons. So while Bruce may still be alive and well, Jimmy is a sidewalk pancake. After some brief discussion, the wizard and a trio of his ne'er-do-wells decide to keep an eye on Bruce Wayne as he was seen getting into a van with Robin the Boy Wonder in broad daylight. Great secret identity having their world's greatest detective. Shortly after, Bruce visits Professor Hamill under the suspicion that he's the wizard and sets himself up to be kidnapped that night by a few henchmen. Either that or Bruce was just stupid enough to let them know where he'd be, which I wouldn't put past him at this point. Bad news for the wizard, though, is his men not only let Bruce drive them to the secondary location, but they let him drive his own car equipped with a radio that let Robin and hear everything, including exactly where they were going. Hallways, guys in hats, aimless running. Ah, <laughs> what an idiot! Nice mask. You're right, I'm an idiot. Bruce, it's not really you. It it can't be. It can be, and it is. Your mask but back on, you moron. Why do I keep staff. you on staff? You saw Batman. That was Jimmy Vale. Vicky's brother? I don't get it. I'll explain later. Explain later? It's Vicky. three words. She we exchanged clothes. She doesn't know about her brother. Well, there's nothing we can do for him now. Come on, let's go. Unless you want to rifle his pockets for change, you cold-hearted psychopath. Making sure no one had spotted us, he began removing my disguise. I remained motionless, wondering what he was up to. Because that's what superheroes Outside, do. They remain motionless Vicky's while known criminals strip off their clothes. <laughs> Evidently, he was mistaken for me, got into a fight, and fell to his death. He also, for some reason, one refused one to pull off his head. hood at any time and yeah, say, Hey, it's me, Jimmy. I work with you guys, remember? Now we better find the real culprit. If Jimmy Vale wasn't Batman, then who is? Because Why can't whoever's Batman just come out and say, pulling away I'm Batman. <laughs> With Robin, the boy wonder. So what? You aren't fool enough to suppose that Wayne and Batman are one and the same, are you? It has interesting possibilities. Yeah, this scene long ago yeah, abandoned the idea of interesting life. possibilities. That playboy has a rep of... You haven't by any chance found any trace of your stolen remote control machine. Isn't it customary for the police to perform such duties? Or should yes. I do a sort of Ironside thing? That machine is in the hands of... Well, certainly. 
Good day, sir. You may stay to dinner if you wish. <laughs> Wait, no, what? Thanks. I, have a I dinner. hate you. Please stay for dinner? At the French Cafe. Thanks just the same. We're having creamed corn and prunes. Start walking towards your car, Wayne. Don't make any wrong moves. Like starting the Macarena with your palms you up. Your Get going. Yeah. Why did we let the guy we were kidnapping drive? Tell Gabe I love him. What's this all about? A smart guy like you ought to be able to figure it out. Batman. Yes. I mean, that's Batman. not me. My Easy Bake Oven cupcakes are ready. Oh, it's Bruce. At least explain where you two are taking me. Just keep... Nobody you know will ever find you here. Get out. Seems like there's no harm in always keeping that on, but whatever. While Bruce is shoved into yet another shanty in the middle of nowhere that serves as an alphabetical hideout, Robin drives up to the address Bruce spilled over the radio. Someone dressed in the, I assume, spare bat suit, not soiled by Jimmy's guts, lures out the thugs to beat them more effectively than the actual Batman has in this entire series so far. Robin rescues Bruce, and the wizard shows up after all the action to learn that Bruce seemingly isn't the Cape Crusader after all. And plot twist, it was Alfred in the suit. Yes, Alfred, the octogenarian butler to Bruce Wayne, was more effective as a superhero than the actual Bruce Wayne Batman himself. As the wizard and one of his blandly named men flee from the scene, the duo trail closely behind with the wizard's car spewing a smoke screen behind, causing them to crash. But I'm pretty sure we all know this song and dance by now and can be assured they're fine. Vicky's brother's still totally dead and squashed though, and no one really seems phased by that. And that's more concerning than anything the wizard's done so far, in my opinion. Just have to tie my shoes, then I can pull my roost. Take a good look at him, boys. This is what Batman looks like without his fancy clothes. Robin was just seen retrieving a wad of said fancy clothes from a filing cabinet. The good news is the roost is coming up. Wonder what's keeping the whip. Bruce is just happy to be hanging out with some other adults. Wait, that's the bat signal? The light on my calculator watch is brighter. That means Batman's outside. Since he shines his own signal to summon riddle. himself? You watch him. <laughs> Man, zombie Jimmy Vale is pretty fast for a zombie. Wow, more effective than anything the real Batman has done in the whole series. At last, Robin's butt for the world to see. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant plan, beautiful in its elegance. Just needed a hook on the cape, uh, a mattress, a table, chair. Yeah. Sure, why not throw on a chair? Yeah, we definitely planned this. God, I hope Gabe never hears about this. Robin's ruse is very dependent on crates and uh, people not looking around here. I think the wizard himself was in that car. We're going after him. What about Alfred? Oh, Metamucil's kicking in. I think he's safe. <laughs> we endangered my elderly butler. He definitely could have died. Boy, it's great to be rich. Well, at least we proved that Bruce Wayne and Batman aren't the same. Also, Batman well, I mean, smells I, like aspirin. What you should worry about now is that Bruce Wayne can identify a lot of you men. He lives up to his reputation. He won't do anything about it. His reputation mm, is that he has face safe. amnesia? They've turned up. Speed up. Robin, the kind of sidekick who needs to be told to speed up during a car chase. Car chase. Ah, Batman and Robin haven't faced a cloud this noxious since the time they followed the penguin out of Del Taco. Danny DeVito's penguin? Yes. Gah! Yeah. My roos! A chapter in this serial that proves just how underdeveloped these characters are, where butlers are better heroes and brothers of side characters can die to no consequence. This unintentionally morbid entry gets a four and a half out of five. If Hamill's smart enough to invent such a gadget, he's capable of operating as the brains of that gang. A boiled onion could act as the brains of that gang. You wish to see me, Mr. Wayne? Number 223, Read On, From Left to Right, from June 30th, 2014. I see what you mean. Thanks, Puppet Vin Diesel. And Loop. 
ACI gives us so much wackiness, you'd think they'd run out eventually, but nope. Meet Mel and Lem, two not just ugly, but very poorly performed puppets that are attempting through random footage to teach children that you must read words from left to right. Although technically that's not true in all languages, but let's just assume there aren't any bilingual students intended to watch this thing. The puppets lead us into snippets of kids and cheerleaders with letters on their shirts rearranging to spell words, and it's just as engaging as it sounds. Hey, careful. Hi there. My name is Mel. Welcome to our film, From Left to Right. And no, fun puppets haven't been invented yet, so don't ask. I'd like you to meet my friend, Lem. <laughs> Blowing <laughs> cues, <laughs> trashing the kitchen, that is like classic Lem. Oh, Lem. Lem. Come on, come on. And reading from left to right is what this film is all about. Lem, loosen the scarf, no, you're turning from purple. Left to right. Oh, sorry. Oh. At 2.14 a.m. Eastern Time, the puppets oh. became self-aware. <laughs> Collaborate and listen got lost on the way to the shoot. Can you believe this morning I was chasing cars and eating my own poop? Now I'm a star! Life's a wild ride, kids! Woo. Peek behind zippers? Bad advice, kids. Very bad. Not enough Give cheerleaders to spell out S. slaughter our enemy. Give me a P. Give me an S. S. Give me a reason why I'm twice as tall Give as the other L. cheerleaders. L. L. Give me an L. Give me an E. Give me an M. What do you got? Lem, lem, lem. The last sounds you hear before those soft little hands grab you from beneath your bed. As is tradition with ACI, the short gets weirder, and instead of cute kids in t-shirts, now we have a teenager in a straw hat, red long dots and suspenders using pins to keep them up, only for a child to run up and cut them off of him for no discernible reason other than being a pervy jerk, leading the oddly dressed teen to run off into the distance. We also see a little girl chased by a boy in a cape, another girl being fed ice cream out of a drawer, which as a FNAF fan, I find random ice cream being given to innocent kids incredibly suspicious, and a piggy bank being incredibly, violently brutalized. See this part here, it took him 12 tries. The outtakes are shockingly bloody. Ah, metaphor for the anti-circumcision movement. That brave kid started his own vigilante fashion police force. Next, I'm making you eat the hat. Mary saw a pig. Oh, saw a gip. I mean pig. Finally, dyslexia played for laughs. <laughs> Are you sure you... Yeah, Thing from the Adams Family went through a rough patch in the 70s, living out of a kid's dresser, paying a rent in ice cream. No, no! Stop, stop! <laughs> Please, my asthma! <laughs> it's your problem, kid. Keep up the whimsy. Come on. Hey, Hammer, how's it going? <laughs> oh, hey there, Han. Nice to see you. Oh, God! Oh, God! I had a cork in the bottom to get the money when you know! <laughs> pals. We're pals, right? Silent hey, nod. Pal. Less than reassuring. You got my lick now. Pox, 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 everybody! Wonder how Mel and Lem would spell grisly traffic fatality. Because this is the end. This is the end, oh. my Goodbye, only Mel. Lem, the end. This short has so many earmarks of ACI's work, it would be a perfect entry to play ACI bingo with, and I'm giving it a three and a half out of five. Hey, goodbye, Lem. Oh, Lem, by good say. No, Lem, no, up shot, way. please. The proper way. Number 224, Clean and Neat with Harvin Marr, from July 7th, 2014. Come with me. I'll show you what you have to do to be clean and neat. I'll you show you the meaning watch. of loss. Me, knucklehead. Well, here are a couple of old friends of ours. Just over three years ago in number 27 of this series, we met Harv and Marv as they taught us about dental hygiene, and now they're covering the rest of the body. We start off with an extremely bizarre piece of Harv and Marv lore, where we discover that they aren't real humans. I mean, clearly they're animated, but they're aware they're not real people like us. It's very confusing, and the catalyst for Harv trying to convince Marv that they're better off as whatever the heck they actually are. But that, in and of itself, is never explained. 
And Marv is better off as this vaguely supernatural being because humans are disgusting and we get filthy, whereas having no corporeal form keeps our hosts from having to worry about that. And Harv shows Marv by doing what they do best, creepily stalking football-playing children and judging their hygiene habits from afar. No, no, Harv and Marv? But, but we killed you! Oh, we thought you were dead! That looks like fun. I wish I were a real human so I could do that. A real human? You wouldn't like it. You're much better yeah, off as a... Oh, God, Marv, what the hell are we? Fun. Fun? Tell you what, let's watch. And you'll see what you have to do if you're a human. Existential Crisis with Harv and Marv. Yeah, do we have to? Oh, not that dirty, I'm Dr. Parker. Dirty. Get around here a little bit. Come on. Random here, assemblage here. of children yeah. in what might be my yard gather round. Why do we have... We're looking at the skin here through a giant magnifying glass. Wow, say, that is a giant magnifying glass. <laughs> Titanic. Many little openings. Now, out of the pores comes water. We usually call it perspiration or sweat. I'm partial to flesh serum. The water myself. helps cool our skin. <laughs> now, there are many kinds of germs, and some of them can make us sick. Like that botched football That's snap made me sick, Tommy. It's not just to get rid of the dirt, but to get rid of the germs, just so they don't get in our food. Let's never change. play here again. Wash your hands after we... Do any of you tigers know a good way to remove dirt and germs from the skin? Boy, that's a hard question. <laughs> yep, it's right yeah. up there with what why is there saying? something rather than use nothing. Soap and water. Yeah. To be a human, you have to use ugh, soap and water. You're fictional. Because why are you repulsed by that? Washing. He even washes behind his ears. And in all the little cracks. You know, the fact that Harv is a cartoon is the only thing that saves him from lengthy jail terms. Look, Harv, dry soap on their skin causes it to chap and crack. Disgusting. Oh, yeah. Hence my plan to eliminate I the human like race. That Harv, either. no! The cartoons continue to watch a little boy shower, and while clearly innocent in the short, you can't tell me not a single person pointed out the creepiness factor during the making of this thing. After that, they move on to teeth and hair and why brushing them is important, albeit for different reasons. Turns out the kids' coach's insane amount of sweat and oil detailing worked as all the kids run to clean up, and Marv takes a shower, and even though it's completely safe for work and context, that's still not something I woke up wishing I would see today. Hey! What's he doing now? <laughs> Look, let's stop peering in at a kid's shower There's asking what's he doing do now. Called. But I heard that clean hair looks and feels better. Yeah, where did you hear Is that, that you sick freak? Do all humans have to wash and dry like that, Harv? Well, they should. Every day. Unless they want to end Every up like day. us. Tattered pants, right. covered in fleas and, and you sebum. And what else they have to do? That's what I've been looking for. You've been looking for a shelf? No, knucklehead, look! Hey guys, invest in some toilet cams. It's much more efficient. She's brushing her teeth. <laughs> Humans have to do that to get out the little pieces of food that germs grow on. Seriously, Marv, I know you're not the brightest bulb, cavity. but we did a whole episode on cavity. this. Now she's brushing her hair. Do you know why humans do that? Uh, the vanity God, that will no, be their eventual God. downfall, Harv? Well, they... Well, I'll tell you about something you wouldn't like. Life! Well, don't underestimate Life. Marv's love of What's parasites. That? Life! Anybody that doesn't want to get cleaned up before lunch... Doesn't have to. Just keep in mind, a strange race of near humans always watches you bathe. <laughs> Taking a shower isn't so bad, Harv. If you start a little at a time... Whoops! Dropped the soap! People will do. While Harv and Marv are surely going to haunt us all the next time we enter a bathroom, their shorts when rift are surely entertaining, and this one gets a four and a half out of five. <sighs> Just watched a Harv and Marv short well, so unclean. I guess most... Number 225, Willie Whistle from July 24th, 2014. First, stop at the curb, then look to the left and to the right. Yo, oh, Willie, I want that money you owe me by the end of the day, capiche? Start again. With today's last offering, we meet the titular Willie Whistle, a cartoon whistle with a speech impediment who doesn't appear to be in the same nebulous cartoon reality that Harvin Marv are, as the kids are aware of his existence. 
Willie must believe the kids he's teaching all of Dory-esque short-term memory loss, though, as he and his teacher's aid kids repeat the exact same rules of stepping at the curb over and over and over again. Willie also must have some evil powers he isn't sharing with the class, as he suddenly grows arms to teach kids how to distinguish from left to right. Horrifying. Full name, William Mustachio Whistle. Wow, collect krill with that thing. Hi, I'm Willie Whistle. I live deep in this guy's whiskers. But they aren't always there when you need them. That's when you need to hallucinate a talking whistle. Across the street, meet Laura and Woody and Billy. The Mod Squad babies. Hi. 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 Laura and Woody and Billy are friends of mine because they know the right way to cross streets. Do you? No. Then you're no friends of mine. I do. (laughs) I think maybe you'd better listen to Laura, Woody, and Billy. Would you like All to right, maggots, well, listen up! We did it. Is it hard? Laura, if you want to be a safe street crosser, what do you do whenever you come to a curb? Wear bell bottoms. You stop. What do you do when you come to a curb? You stop. And you dangle. When you come to the curb, you stop. Always? Always. Willie Whistle's famous Every curbside time. Socratic dialogue. You stop when- Everybody understand? Yeah, no. That isn't hard. Now, just to be sure you know left from right... Let's have everybody wear a yellow glove on their left hand. Now everybody and sing smooth everybody criminal. Everybody wave their left hand. Everybody put a purple glove on their right hand. Now and everybody sing raspberry right beret. Once Willie finally gets to teaching the kids about crossing the street, he again repeats the same keywords and examples again and again and again, and even with all the repetition, the short still only ends up being six and a half minutes long. Here's a tip, National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. If you don't have enough good info for even five minutes of screen time without repeating yourself, maybe a short film isn't the best way to deliver the info. And watch this. The street is okay. now a football field, now and that's your end zone. Go play, children! Right hand. In traffic. Let's try it. Maria, would you like to show us how to cross safely? Sadly, Maria's life peaked at this very moment. You stop it, now it's clear, and you're Maria okay. was debriefed for hours Good. by parents Thanks, and Maria. police concerning Bobby, the animated talking whistle who commanded works? her. What do you do if there are cars parked on the street? Willie can conjure Stop cars out of thin air, and those are the cars he chooses? Cars coming or not. It's kind of Went to Hogwarts. <laughs> then I look to the left, the right, and then to the left again. And now I'm late for like school, get expelled, and have Good. no future. Thanks, Laura. If I see a car coming, step back till it passes. Look left, right. Left again. Then I wonder so what's happening. Oh. Da, 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 <sighs> well, he is the actual da, 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 kid from da, da, What's Happening, so I suppose he's da, 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 owed it. Always stop. Always look to the left and to the right and to the left again till there are no cars coming. And don't dare make fun of Willie's list or or suffer the consequences. Always go to the edge of the park cars. Willie's brother, Bill, went on to fame in the Schoolhouse Rock series while Willie took to the bottle. They found his legless body at Conjunction Junction and arrested Rufus Xavier Sarsaparilla for his murder. This short may go by quick, but it packs in the laughs, and I'm giving this one a three and a half out of five. Each time you look. It has nothing to do with safety, but Willie and his ex, Meredith Whistle, are not on speaking terms. If you remember it, As always, thank you all so, so much for watching, and thanks to all my awesome Patreon supporters, including Jackie Ball and Kevin Nata. I know it's been a long time since I've done any reviews at all, and I'm excited to be back, and I really am going to try to keep moving forward with these, because I want to. I want to be able to provide these for you, to give you guys some fun laughs, and it's fun for me as well to make them, so I want to be sure that I can get back on this horse. I already know what review's coming next, as I'll be doing MST3K The Dead Talk Back from Season 6, and I'm also working on a new Google Image video as well, which will probably be up first. I hope you guys are all doing well out there, and looking forward to what I have coming down the pipeline. Thanks again, and I'll see you guys later. Willie's brother.